proper number 12, Irish Whiskey. What's up, everybody? All right, another, another massive event, big pay-per-view headliner, $6 million gate, all these things. I mean, do you still get fired up about stuff like this as something special, or is this just, this is just business for you these days? Um, I, man, since I signed on to, to fight professionally at 18, and I knew since I did that journey that nothing be like on the personal level. Reason being, fight night, nothing's personal, man, and still nothing is personal. This is as close as it gets to personal. There's one individual that I'm gonna break his face shortly. But there's nothing personal, you know, and this is always awesome, you know, because I know this leads to me selling more pay-per-views. This leads to me representing myself and my people and all that. So um, it, it never gets boring, man. It's always still fun, man. I, I love what I do. In just a couple months and under a year, it'll be 20 years professionally. And this is something you can fact check online. You can have the Instagram fact checkers go fact check me. I've been fighting now 20 years professionally very shortly, you know. So I love what I do. I wouldn't be doing this. If it was just for the money or, or just for the interviews, you know? Yeah. How about this particular fight though, Jorge? I mean, love it or hate it, right? As you said, it's not personal, but there's, there's so much going on here. Like, I imagine on the one hand, you get to settle a score and that's gonna feel really good. On the other hand, he's getting a lot of spotlight. He's getting a nice paycheck as well. He's getting to, to, to bathe in some of that attention. So is there a part of you that hates this, that you had to give that to him? Um, you know, not only do, do I fight for a living and, uh, and I get to punch people in the face, but every once in a while I get to punch somebody in the face that I really don't like, and I get paid for it. So on, on that end, I love it, you know, that uh, he's like the worst selling pay-per-view performer in, in the whole division, and I'm gonna just upcrease his, uh, his name's sake, you know? But at the same time, I'm gonna send him to the hospital, Ben Askren style, so what's a good, and anyways, he doesn't get pay-per-views, so it's really like a lose-lose. He's gonna get his flat fee and all that, but he doesn't get pay-per-views. So it's like, fuck you three times, you know? What do you make of his talk? I mean, he was just here recently talking about your family, talking about, you know, the people around you. I mean, do you take that as, okay, well, the guy's just trying to hype a fight, or do you take it as legit personal? I mean, is it? No, I, I, I take it as legit, like, I'm going to fuck you up, you know? Like I said, it, nothing's personal, but this is as close as it comes to it. I just, for, for many reasons, I want to hurt this guy. Like, I've never hurt nobody before. Um, when he's talking about my kids, it, the, there's, you, there's kids, religion, people's wives. I, I think that's, that, that's beneath us. Let other people, other sports do that. We don't need to do that. When it's two men getting in that cage or two women getting in that cage, you, you don't need to do that. We're gonna fight and we're gonna find out. If you wanna talk crap about me, about my speed, my reflexes, I, I get all that, but what do my kids have to do with it? Another thing that I don't get, why does he talk about women so much? Every chance he gets, he attacks Amanda, attacks Joanne or any of these fighters. And I, I think I've figured it out. There's some doctors that we've been talking to. I think he's going to have a sex change and then he's going to go on over and start fighting women maybe because, as he says, he's just building a pay-per-view, you know? So maybe, maybe that's what he's doing. So he's a very interesting character, a lot of flaws in his head, and I can't wait to straighten him out. Tactically speaking, obviously, we know you guys spend a lot of time training together. So I do wonder, what advantages do you take out of that time together? I mean, is there something that you know about you know, whether it be psychological, whether it be about tactical, whether it be about, you know, his approach to things. Is there anything that you take out of that time that you had together that you can use? Um, I've, I've never quit on a session, right? Like, when me and him go, I've never quit, no matter how much, if it was a wrestling s session, no punches involved, and he just beat me up wrestling, I never quit. He's quit when we're going strikes, you know, and from body blows and stuff like that. He's gotten upset, took his gloves off, walked out of the cage. He's had to have the coaches talk to him and say, hey, man, it's just training, relax. You know, you're getting a little bit too heated. Just get back in there. You know, it's all good. I've never done that. You know, I'll take my ass whooping like a man, and I'll give my ass whooping like a man. Like I've said in numerous interviews, he could be all right hammer. That he could do. He can never play the nail role. And as soon as things don't start to go his way, man, he quickly unfolds. It's a snowball effect. We've seen him. You'll see the facial expressions he makes when things ain't going his way. Well, Woodley Alves wasn't giving in to him and put him in a little gate team before he could even sink it and tapped, you know. It's just uh, it's the nature of the beast. He's a good hammer, but never a nail. Right, so last thing for me, uh, you know, we saw after his last fight, him kind of say, Usman, you know, it was, hey, it was just about business and money. I mean, <laughs> you win this fight, he gets up and says, hey, Jorge, you know, we was just selling pay-per-views. It's all good. Do you accept that from him? He, he knows me, like, through and through, you know. Um, 
he he would never dare do that. He you know he wouldn't get close to me in any shit conference or anything like that. He he wouldn't put himself at a chance where I could end his ass again. You know, especially because he's talked about my kids. My kids don't do a pay per view sell. Like people ain't tuning. Oh, he's talking about his kids. I'm really gonna tune in now. You know, he talked about Usman's dad. I don't know how many times calling him all types of things. Usman's mom. And then you're gonna say it's just business. I'm selling pay per view. I love you, bro. When he had said for months, I'll never shake this guy's hand. That, that that shows how much of a coward he is, what a snake he is, bro. He'll say whatever and whenever, and then when the light's on him, when, the, when it's time to, to be a man about it, he does what he does. You know, I, I can't respect him in any way, shape, or form, man, you know? And kind of like Ben Askren, like I, I don't care for Ben Askren, and if Ben Askren were, were in a, a place and he says something to me, then shit, we could either fight or not. You know, if he's cool, I'll be cool, or we could fight. But with Kobe, it'll always, for as long as we both live, will always be a problem. Just because he mentioned my religion, just because he mentioned my kids. And I think um, for future generations, I don't want the 10 year olds that are gonna be in this sport taking over in the future thinking that's how you sell pay-per-views. Cause again, I say he is the worst selling pay-per-view guy. Even with all his antics and talking about everything under the sun, doesn't sell no pay-per-view. So obviously it doesn't work, you know? Well, hey, do you look at Colby now and from that guy who used to live with you, do you even recognize him or has he completely 100% changed as a person? Uh, it's not that he's changed as a person because the only thing shittier than his current act is his real self, you know? He would take my coach. My coach went with him to Brazil. My coach coached him in, a, in his amateur fights all the way to he fought RDA, and we were both in his corner cheering him on for him to get that belt. And as soon as he had the chance to, to like, do right, pay this guy, man, because he's been with you four or five years, hasn't made a fucking penny. Now you finally earned some coin. Pay this guy back. What did he do? Fuck you, paid him zero dollars, you know? So, I, I, I don't know, man, what to tell you. He's just as shitty as he was then, and, and he's just a little bit more personified for the TV. It's a little bit more glorified for the TV, how shitty he could be. I'm sure he left everybody here with a bad taste in their mouth. You guys don't have to all agree at once, but fuck, bro, nobody could stand the guy, you know? All, it, it's just bad antics after bad antics. Then after that, when he's in the corner, the UFC was gonna cut me. The UFC was gonna cut me, so I had to change my whole persona. You're still not selling no fucking pay-per-views, bro. You know? And then just six, seven months ago, I got the video clip here somewhere. If somebody wants to play it, um, Jorge Masvidal's my best friend. Jorge Masvidal's my best friend. You ain't never heard me say that on tape. But what, what happened, man? Because six, seven, eight months ago, he was saying I was his best friend. What happened, bro? What, you didn't pay my coach and I didn't like that? You, you know, you fucking coward. Is there an argument? People always say, like, oh, Kobe's just playing a character. But if you're playing a character all the time, at what point are you not even playing a character anymore? At what point are you just that person? Or is my best friend? Or is my best friend? Or is my best friend? What the fuck? That was like eight months ago, bro. What the fuck is wrong with you, bro? You ain't never heard me say that in video. Why, why was he saying that? Because I was already a household name, a star. So he's just trying to align himself with that. Ask him any question about Trump policies or anything that Trump changed or didn't change and see what the fuck he tells you. He can't tell you shit. He just wanted to tie his name to something that was fucking going up. You know, whether people loved him or hated him, he's like, let me attach my name to that because I could get some fame with that. The guy's a fucking complete chameleon, bro. Last one for me. You sometimes specifically mentions like, oh, he couldn't handle it when I went to the body in training. Oh, he couldn't handle it when I put the pressure on him, he would break. But he never seems to say specifics as to why he can beat you. He just sort of says, oh, I'm gonna go in there and smash him. Is that because there was no occasion where he had a strategic advantage over you in sparring? When, uh, when he first came on over, and again, everything could be fact checked, I was at 155 pounds, I just left Strike Force. He was uh, just fresh out of college. He was actually considering fighting at either 185 or 170. So we used to wrestle all the time, and it didn't fare well for me in wrestling. He consistently beat me at wrestling, straight wrestling. As I started to get bigger, those wrestling exchanges started to get a little different. Once I came to 170, but that was many years later. We're talking about like three, four years later. All of a sudden, the wrestling goals are not in his favor as much, you know? And now he's having to take a deep breath because I got a little bit extra weight behind me and I know more of the wrestling. So the goals between me and him started to become far and few in between when at 55, he'd always want to go, always want to use me for his training camps. Um, I remember for the Damian Maya fight, perfect guy to, to help him out in a way uh, to do a couple of things like Damian was me because I fought with Maya and I could, you know, try to emulate Maya in certain situations, half guard sweeps, things like that. Wouldn't want to go with me. I'd show up to practice 
Mike, I'm ready. Uh, you told me today I was going to go with Kobe. Yeah, but Kobe says he doesn't want to go with you today. Or other strikers that he was fighting, once I was at 170, didn't want to go no more. I was like, I wonder why, man. Because I used to take those ass whoopings like a man when you'd beat me wrestling. Now that I got a little bit of weight on me and I could give it back to you, you don't want to go. And I always knew since then, coward. Right, right. Uh, we were talking with Colby right before you came in, out here, and he was talking about his lifestyle choices compared to yours. And, and he brought up the fact that he used to use uh, like food stamps and then referred to you as Fidel Castro Jr. and brought up communism and stuff. So I'd like your response to that. I, I don't get the question. He said, I'm Fidel Castro Jr.? You see what I'm saying? This guy will just say anything possible. Um, uh, due to Fidel Castro, family members of mine died. Uh, my aunt is missing a tit because she tried to cross over from Cuba to Guantanamo Bay and that whole landmine, it's rigged with landmines and her left tit is missing because she is crossing over. She hit a landmine and exploded. So for him to say that is just for one thing, to get an emotion out of me, to, to get the newspapers. The, the only person that I dislike more than Kobe Covington is no longer alive and that's Fidel Castro. So, I mean, you know, it's, it's kind of a silly question by you, I think, bro. I just wanted your response. Yeah, you know my response, man. Jorge, eh, en español una, todos sabemos la, la importancia de la amistad para un latino, para un cubano. ¿Cómo tú definirías la traición de Colby Covington a ti en lo personal? Eh, yo lo defino como, en primero, le, le puse un cuchillo a mi entrenador, no le pago lo que él dijo como hombre que iba a pagar. En segundo, empezó a hablar de mi hijo de las exes mías, de mi religión al constante. Eso es lo único que ha hecho él para vender el PPV. No hablar de él y cuánto él está entrenando y las cosas que ha hecho en su vida para mejorar como un atleta, no. Hablar de mis hijos, hablar de, de mi estilo de vida. Yo puedo entender todo, pero de la religión y los hijos nunca se habla. So, eh, la traición es algo feo, pero por lo menos en este libro, en, este, en esta película, yo le llego a dar el final. Or here, right here, right over here. Me, me favorece porque. Eh, Me favorece porque él al, al fin de día tiene miedo a las manos de, 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 de oponentes, no nomás de yo, pero de varios. Él nunca le ha gustado pelear mano a mano, le gusta entrar, a, a abrazar a un hombre, olerle los testículos, es lo que le encanta a él. So, él sabe que conmigo, sea o no sea, yo cansado, yo luchando, no, le voy a meter las rodillas, los codos en la cara y le voy a hacer la vida imposible. So, obviamente para mí me... me, me me traen más coraje, más cosas, pero a la misma vez yo soy un profesional. No puede ser, te quiero dar más duro a ti, yo estoy cargando el golpe más que nunca. No, yo sigo siendo el mismo profesional día y noche. Y, y parte de eso es que nada, nada es personal en este juego en realidad. Puede decir lo que quiera, pero nada es personal en realidad. Es bien cerca personal, pero no es personal. Jorge, down here to your left. Um, if this fight goes the way that you want to and you get to well, stick the hatchet in his neck, I think that was a quote that you, you said, how satisfying will that be and where will it rank in your, your victories? Uh, in my victories, it'll rank, you know, it'll put me as the number one contender. I'll be competing for the title shortly after, so that's, that's definitely a plus, you know. But as far as, like, having beaten great fighters and stuff, I wouldn't even talk to my grandkids about this guy, you know. It'd just be, it'd just be some personal stuff. And, yeah, I beat this guy up and some dude I never really liked, you know, and that's it. But as far as accomplishments go, no, nah, he won't rank on there as far as accomplishments. I, I don't like his style, how he fights. I think I'm going to make it look very easy come Saturday night, and people are not going to even give me credit. They're going to be like, yeah, I guess Masvidal was right. Kobe's overrated, overranked, and fucking a piece of shit individual. Jorge right here. Uh, Jorge, you've talked about the insecurities you feel like you've brought out in Kobe. Has there ever been any insecurities he ever brought out in you, whether when you first started training or anywhere else? Uh, I wouldn't say insecurities, but I knew uh, he wrestled since he was seven years old. I didn't come into wrestling until much later, till, till I started MMA. I wouldn't say insecurities, but strong, like, hey, I, I know I'm not great in this department. Let me get better at it. I'll keep going with this individual. But insecurities is not something that guy could bring out of me. People talk about how you guys going to keep the emotions in check. Can you describe what do you think you're going to feel when the ref finally says go on Saturday night and you can finally put hands on him? Just another fight, man. 
like I like I've said, it, there's a lot of emotions, but those will be left for after the fight. Maybe I'll cheer a little bit harder. Maybe I'll eat more cheeseburgers after. But really, man, when 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 you're in there, I I don't care about nothing else. I, my whole life leads to that, and I, and I've been a professional now for 19 years. It's it's not gonna change on that night. I'm not gonna. Oh my gosh, it's it's this guy that I hate and cock my hand back a little further to try to hit a little harder. Nah, it's just business, man. Ain't nothing personal. This is as close as it comes to personal, but ain't nothing personal in this shit. There's a bunch of scumbags that I've already dealt with prior to Kobe. None at this level, but there's a bunch that I've dealt with before Kobe, and there'll be a bunch more after. None of them are going to take it personal. This is just a chapter in my life. Jorge, another one here. You cooked up a special plan for Ben Askren, and it came off in, in a fa in viral fashion. Do you have a similar one for Kobe? Uh, I got a very similar plan for Kobe. It starts violent and it ends even more violent. Jorge at the back. Hey, what's How up, mate? Doing? How you doing, man? Um, has this fight gone past the point of no return in terms of you two ever becoming friends again? You know, my, my kids mean a lot to me. My, my daughter's 13 years old. She's like online. I can't, you know, control her every second of the day. So she goes on the phone, she sees things like, why is this person talking about it? Why, why are we getting brought up? The, those type of things, you know, I'll never let that slide in my life, man. I mean, we could, uh, we could be in a, both of us in a very bad situation where we could maybe help each other to get out of that situation. And I would say, no, nah, we both die here. You know, like in a sinking ship, I'm causing a fist fight right there with him and we both die, you know? So if Colby extends a hand after the fight, is it super necessary that he's, you don't shake it? He's not going to come shake my hand under no circumstances. I'll tell you the first thing why, because he's going to be headed to the hospital. Um, all you guys are going to prophesy it now. I'm going to put Monday morning, Colby Covington still in critical condition, might not make it. That, that's all I'm trying to do, man. All right, back here. Uh, the fight's on 305 day. He's calling himself the king of Miami. Do you have extra motivation to put on for your city on, on Saturday? The, again, the delusions I talk about, this guy's from Oregon, moved to Florida, not even Miami, moved to Florida when he was 28 years old, lives in uh, like Fort Lauderdale or something like that, doesn't even live in Miami. So for me to even address that, it's like wasting, it. it's like me saying I'm the king of England, you know? It's just fucking, people are gonna laugh, laugh me out of death, you know what I'm saying? It's the same exact thing with this guy. Ain't nobody with my city supports this guy, looks at this guy and goes, oh yeah, yeah, this is one of our representatives. Quite opposite, the, the, the opposite, you know? He doesn't like to go out of Miami too much because man, you know, shit might happen to his ass. And after this fight, I'm telling you, he might not be allowed in the city because I get a lot of phone calls constantly with this guy's at and people asking me, green light this guy? I said, no, 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 nobody can touch this guy but me. But after the fight, he belongs to the city. He'll see, he'll see where he really stands after the fight. Thank you, everybody. Get ready for some violence on Saturday, man. My van goes gonna be up. There are lots of ways to support our brave first responders. Drinking a rich and smooth proper Irish whiskey is one of them. For every bottle of proper number 12 we sell, a donation is made to first responders. Here's to the proper heroes. Shlonda, 